Okay, here we go. Let me get the music on. See if I remember how to do this. <laughs> We are back. It's the Digital to Dice podcast, episode 26. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And boy, it's been a heck of a 2020 for me already here. And uh, I'm glad to see February 1st coming, Ron. I really am. Yes, (laughs) I agree. It's been nothing but bad news over here. You know, I've been sick for three weeks, just down and out. I haven't even played any games. I didn't feel, you know, know when when you're that sick... And you just you you're not really concentrating, and you're like you, you you can't play a game, and sometimes you don't even want to watch TV. You're just like, man, I don't want to think, you know. Yeah, that's kind of how it's been over here. So uh, Ron carried the load last week. He snuck in a show, a listen to comment show. And we will be reading some of those comments uh, next week on next week's show. Today we're just going to get back into the swing of things. And um, Ron, what's going to be our topic today? We're going to talk about jazzing up your game, what you might be able to do to make your – it could do this for the the console, the PC, or your tabletop, and what you can might add to your experience to add to your immersion. Yeah, so some fun stuff to talk about there. Uh, before we do that, I guess we need to do the usual. Let's talk about uh, what we're playing. Aunt Becky the bank called something about the check not clearing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Is that still going on now? I don't, uh, I don't well, know. it's always going to go on with her. Yeah, I don't it, know. It's, it's the scarlet letter. And in her yeah. case, it's the scarlet red letter. Yeah. Um, so you haven't played much of anything. You haven't felt well. Yeah, well, I, I did play a level. couple of things. I did sneak in a game of uh, Deep Space D6 which is that spaceship game where you roll the dice and you try to shoot away the enemies and the whole bit. That's a difficult game to, to win. I even played it on easy, and I just got destroyed. I kept rolling the dice, and I wasn't getting any any of the red sides. The red sides are your your lasers to shoot down the enemy, and I think I rolled three in a row. I got no red dice to come up, and uh, when that happens, you can't take anybody down, and I just got ganged up on and got destroyed. So it's, it's a fun yeah. game, but it's a difficult game. You need to really roll a lot of red in that game, and it's only one side of it's red, and that's how you blast them out of the sky. Uh, but that that is a fun game. The only other thing I've really done, Ron, is on Steam I'm playing this jigsaw puzzle game. You had a live stream about it a few weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks ago I did a live stream on my YouTube channel, me playing a puzzle and I had a lot of people watching. It was kind of fun, just chilling out. I almost did that again last night because I haven't streamed in weeks just because I haven't really felt good. I've had no voice. and I, and I But I get kicked back, and I put the feet up, but I just put together. It's just a jigsaw puzzle. You use the mouse, and you spin the pieces around and put them on the board, and it, it's just relaxing. It really is before bed, and it tires your mind out a little bit too because I haven't done a lot of physical activity because of just not being well, but... So if you go to bed, sometimes your mind starts racing. So this this puzzle thing actually uh, tires out my mind, which I really enjoy. So That's good. yeah, and every every day I sit there and say, "Yeah, hey, I'm gonna fire up a game of strat hockey, either on the on the table or on the PC." And I I just I just haven't got to it. I'm not at that point yet. So hopefully soon. I keep saying every day I see, keep saying soon, soon, soon. Um, I imagine so. Sunday. Before that football game, you might feel like it. You got a busy day tomorrow, Saturday, the yeah. first of February. But yeah, so yeah, yeah. Super Bowl Sunday is this Sunday here. Uh, what, what are you thinking about the game? Um, I did the pre-play of it using second and ten. Okay, speaking about what I've been playing. Statistic wise, Dave, Kansas City outgained San Francisco. They had more time of possession than San Francisco, and they threw it better than San Francisco. But San Francisco won forty four to twenty one. I yeah, uh, um, you well, know I I would not. I, I don't watch a lot of modern football, but I gotta tell you, San Francisco's defense is incredible, and I would not be surprised after playing that game. Although Kansas City is a an an educational one and a half point favorite, not that we condone that in any way, shape, or form. Um, that I I could see San Francisco's defense just making the big plays and and just 
keeping Kansas City off the board. Yeah, they say defense, you know, wins championships. Although it would be their sixth. Last year it was defense. The year before it was all offense. I think it was. So it'd be interesting to see two two big powerful offenses. You know, Kansas City in both of their games they get down early, quick, and they came back. I don't think you can do that in the Super Bowl. No, you, you, and the other thing that San Francisco does really, really well is run. The football, they have three guys who can carry it about eight, nine times a game. And so if San Francisco can get a lead early, they can go ground and pound and just keep the ball short. I mean, they're the two best offensive players outside of Mahomes for Kansas City are, are Kittle, the tight end for uh, San Francisco, and Kelsey, the tight end for Kansas City. Mm. I mean, it's going to be a possession game. You know what's going to be fun for me this year is uh, I can just sit back and watch and not have to worry. I can just enjoy the game because there's no Patriots this year. I'm not, like, pulling for any one team. I actually like both teams. For the first time in a long time, I can say it's a Super Bowl where I'm okay with whoever wins. Usually there's one team you don't like for some reason, but these are two. I've always been a Kansas City fan. I just like the Chiefs. They were always, like, a good neutral team to root for. Yeah. And San Fran, I don't have any ill will against San Fran. Jimmy G playing a quarterback there. They got the running game. You know, so there's two teams that I'm okay with. Either way, I I think I would like to see Kansas City. Just if I had to pick one, I'd like to see Kansas City, you know, because it's been a long time since they won one. But I, I kind of don't care. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah, no, I, you know, I I pretty much feel the same way. Yeah. I would not mind seeing San Francisco win it. Um, I think Mahomes is spectacular. I, I love how brash he is, and if he can back it up, great. Mm. There was uh, a couple of people uh, on some of the groups I belong to that were – playing, you know, downy games and the whole bit, and they were pre-playing the Super Bowl, too. And one team said, Kansas City got a late field goal to go ahead, and then San Francisco took the next drive, went down and scored to win it, and it was a high-scoring game. So everyone's saying high-scoring game on their their, uh, their replays. Yeah, I mean, I the over-under, for educational purposes, is 54 and a half, and mine was 65. And so I, I see it more at 54, 55, uh, but it could be a 30 27 game, a 30 yeah. 35 31. It could get up there. It really could. But San Francisco's defense, I don't think nationally has gotten enough credit. Mm. The other thing I did extra this week was the Kobe Bryant tribute game. Yeah, you know, that has really been sad. I've actually been following that. Uh, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos because they've had a lot of helicopter pilots and these, quote, experts and whatever, and and regular dudes on a lot of these videos trying to find out, like, what happened. I think we're all confused, like, what happened? And uh, they just, a lot of them, in fact, practically all of them are saying the fog just rolled in right at that point. And they couldn't see anything. And it's just, they tried to get over the mountain and they missed it by 30 feet. And it's just terrible, terrible tragedy. It really is. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to make sense of it all. And you try to, you know, that's just what we do, I think, you know. I, I think for me, you know, flashback to Thurman Bunsen because that was um, from when I was a kid. And of course, other people, you know, Corey Lydell and uh, Roy Halliday and, and, and stuff like that have died in, in plane crashes. Um, you take someone who was a legend, you know, top 10 basketball talent of all time. And we're used to seeing these people get old and gray or at least in their fifties, you know? Yeah. Um, and so to see him go at 41, which is considerably younger than both of us and his daughter. Yeah. I mean, I think that just kind of, for, for me, that was just, and the other, you know, mother, father, daughter that was also on the plane. It just, but yeah, to, you know, for the Bryant family to lose not only their, you know, the husband, but a child. Yeah. It's, Losing one is bad enough. Absolutely terrible news. Terrible tragedy. It, it, it's terrible. So um, that, that along with Neil Peart, the drummer from Rush. Uh, and, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, I know it's not a sports related thing, but that was uh, oh, but- Rush was my favorite band. It still is my favorite band, and I was crushed by that. So that happened right before I got sick, and that just did not do, do well when I was laying in bed not feeling well. That just weighed heavy on my heart too. So it's been a very difficult January, needless to say. So uh, yeah. what what else have you been playing? Let's get back on oh, some good news. All right, now. on the sports. Well, let's see. Uh, I've actually felt better. I had a couple of bad days, but. 
Uh, 78 replay, Major League Baseball replay is in full force. We just finished week three of that. I uh, did the A at my uh, 86 football AFC wild card game. The NFC one will be this Sunday. And uh, if you're a New York Jet fan, don't watch. <laughs> So actually, a, a full week. I think you know five videos in the process of either going up or certainly produced in this. And so, yeah, getting through getting through a January. Oh, now, I haven't played any strat hockey in a while. Updated some stuff, but but uh, but yeah. So so certainly playing some stuff. I think I, uh, like. Dave Koch had a sale, and he threw in a bunch of freebies. Did you grab any of those? I did not. I did. I uh I, I think I bought I bought a golf course or two. And and then that included that got me all the freebies. So I said, okay, cool. So I'll I'll get the a new golf course. I think they had two new golf courses. I might have got one. I don't know if I got one or two. Uh but I think they threw in a course if you bought it and then you know, but they had a whole bunch of freebies going on. Uh so I, I was like, Okay, cool, I'll grab some of these. I think there was a some some hockey season I didn't have or some game I didn't have. They had an all a seventy one baseball all star game, stuff like that. Yeah. So when they have the freebies, I try to go and buy a little bit of something so I can get them all and have them. So but anyway, so Absolutely. All right, so shall we hit the uh the main Let's topic? talk about jazz, all shall right. we? I still don't like pineapple on pizza. There, uh, have I hit all my stereotypes yet? Uh, got I, I do. I do. I like the Hawaiian pizza, you, the really? ham and pineapple on a pizza. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Warm pineapple is really good, no matter what it's I don't even good. like it on ham. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, I don't know if people still do those things with the cherry and the and, and that for the, the roast, the Oven baked ham. No. Sometimes you go to a restaurant, whether it's a Chinese restaurant or another restaurant, and, and in the meal somehow is pineapple cooked yeah, in there. And that, I like that. I'm okay with the yeah. rice, but. Yeah, I'm no. a pineapple guy. I really am. I'm a pineapple guy. So anyway. All right. So let's talk about jazzing up our games. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. Obviously. If you have it on the computer, you can import logos and helmets and jerseys and, and all kinds of fields and, you know, rinks and courts and, you know, jazz it up. And uh, whether you do it yourself or you find it online and download it and you put it in a folder and you make it look really nice. And the other way is to, uh, if you're printing stuff up on the computer, is to add some things on there as well. You could do that with the logos. I know our friend Al Red Sox fan has a collection of football helmet, the mini football helmets that you used to get for a quarter at the vending machines. And we'll put those there so we can see them. Yeah, there's all these external things too. Yeah, because I, I have some of the helmets too. And uh, yes. sometimes I'll pr I'll print out a rink if I'm playing hockey and just set it down so I have the like the, the team rink in front of me when I play. And you know, there's all these. Uh, we can call those props, I guess. Those would be I don't know props. Exactly yeah. what they are. I mean, there whatever it is for you to add to the immersion of what you're doing. I mean, Dave also made fake signs for the podcast and for dave's classic rewind for him to really kind of give that the whole you know stadium feel yeah i did that i i got a couple of little i found a little craft store to these little they look like little billboards and i just printed out something and stuck them on the billboards and and when i play sometimes i put them in the background and it, it advertised the podcast and it uh it advertises my uh, dave's classic rewind segment if i'm doing a dave's classic rewind uh thing and um yeah yeah so i mean so i use props sometimes and, you know sometimes even when i don't stream or i don't record i'll sometimes put them up there because they make you feel neat if i'm playing you know a downy football game let's say i'll get the helmets out and put them on the table you know between the dice tower and uh it, it's it's fun you know it really adds to it instead of just sitting there with a with a notepad and dice i jazz it up you know you put you, you know maybe i'll put some team colors out somewhere or you know something like that so i like to do the props even when i'm not doing any show of any kind i think that's right. really and, fun and, and you've also done the logos on the cards if, yeah if you take a pdf and put those on there yeah there's a a couple of downy games i got that has the teams i, I want to say fast action football good good example fast action football is a good example of they you print out the team but it's just black and white OK, so I, I, I have a PDF editor that I go in and what I do is I add a couple of lines, just like straight lines. Some are vertical, some are horizontal. And, and those are the team colors. And then I drop in a helmet 
or a logo in the middle because usually there's space for that stuff on on uh, this the fast actor football, and that is way better. Way better. It takes time because you got to bring it into the editor and get it just right, and and you know adjust the colors and the whole bit. But when you print it out in color, and then you go to play, and you got the two teams in front of you on the sheet, and they got logos and colors. It, it, it first of all, it makes it easier to find because when you're flipping through all the teams, you know that's you know, true. You know, it's like you can look at the logos and the helmet. You're not just looking at the name at the top. Uh, and then it, but it just, it's just fun because you got the team colors and they just, I don't know. I, I've always been into logos and stuff. So if I have the chance to, I, I try to put at least the colors on the card of the team, if not uh, some kind of a logo or a helmet or a brand of some kind, if I'm printing out at home. I, I try and it, dep- it depends on what it is. If I'm doing a cards and dice thing, I don't usually do any modification for that because I've been doing it for a while. I, I let the thing just kind of run into my head, whether, you know, I'm pretending it, you know, it's all pretend anyway, whether you're at Northlands or the Veterans Coliseum or whatever. Uh, but I remember a few years ago, Stratomatic sold playboards for Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, and I think Tiger Stadium and Yankee Stadium. So if you wanted to play, if you were, you know, more fans of one of those teams, and mm-hmm. let's face it, there are a lot of Yankee fans out there, that if you wanted to make sure that all your baseball games were played at the old Yankee Stadium or the remodeled Yankee Stadium, you could. Uh, it, it it depends. There's no requirement for it now. The game companies can't release with team names, which is why. So when you get, let's say, uh, for Strat and Appa uh, or some of the others, you know, you get Chicago N. Yeah. Okay. So if it's football, it's obviously the Bears, or if it's baseball, it's the Cubs. But they can't. They don't own the rights to the name Cubs, so they can't do that. Uh, when you get to the computer, OOTP through the steam workshop get you some ballparks and some faces and some logos and of course ootp is officially licensed by major league baseball so the logo is already there uh but act- before they were before even the hockey before the franchise hockey manager was right was affiliated with the nhl uh you know it was just generic you could still import the logos in there and the whole bit right uh action pc i've got several videos on my channel about um modding the football, baseball, and basketball games, and the hockey's done the same way. You can download rinks or I, I action PC is a fun one to do. They really did a good job leaving that wide open to import uh, your personal stuff. And and I was actually shocked when I first saw that because I would play the game with all generic stuff, and then I saw you and a few other people playing with, like, custom fields and end zones and helmets. I was like, how are you guys doing this, you know? Mm-hmm. And it it does take some time, and d- depending on what you want to do, I mean, I used to go crazy. Like, I set up the 74, 75 NHL season on Action PC. I did every team. I did every logo, I did every jersey, I did every rink, and it it took a long, long time to do that. It really did. Uh, but but then when I do other seasons or other games or other projects, I, I now only do the teams that I'm going to do. It, it As much as the, the 74 season is great, I went in and actually did every player's pronunciation too. So when you, when it was read the guy's name, it would be good. And I you know, so I really really did up that one season, and I had a lot a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Uh, but now it's you know if I'm gonna get on there and say hey I'm gonna play the uh, you know the you know whatever the the 1993 you know Maple Leafs Kings game game seven that they played, I would just go and jazz up that that one game those two teams that one game and i wouldn't do the whole season you know because i wouldn't need to but it is it's really night and day when you fire up the game and you see you know usually they have the team colors on action pc they're good with that but when you have Uh when you don't have the generic rink when you actually have the rink and especially if you're playing a a newer season and they have somebody who's created a rink with the logos on it you know what i mean of the ads and stuff that's really fun in fact we um we've done Custom rinks. Where, yes, we have. Well, you have. Yeah, I've, I did a. Uh, I did a digital to dice rink. I did a. Uh, I think I did a retro sports rink or a retro yep, sports shown field. on my channel. Yeah. Yeah, and so you can really do anything you want as far as I, I did. Um, 
my my uh, my roller hockey league. I did that. I did that logo at Center Ice, and I did a you know a custom game with some of my players in that, and that was fun. So uh, you could really really get crazy with uh with some of these things here, and it's really not all that difficult, and it, and it it makes a difference. I love seeing the logos when I in drive. the action PC family. Once you know how to do it for one, you can do them for for all four. Pretty much, yeah, and so. Um, there are some restraints there. You you're, uh, can't be any longer than 32 characters in the name before the pre suffix. Right. Um, uh, Action PC is building a community site. The fans are, which has some pictures. If you watched my uh, college football playoff pre-play, I got the pictures from th- those pictures were on that site, and so were the logos. So all I do was was tell it where to find the pictures and pop in the two, the two right logos there. So I at least had that part right. Uh, sportsreplays.net has oodles and oodles and oodles of mods for your games. You know, logos and picture packs. And it depends because, you know, anyone can start a replay, but it, whatever it takes for you to want to continue it, sometimes it's just that kind of immersion. It depends, like I said, what I'm doing with the project. That 74 season, I went nuts. I did. I, I spent hours configuring that. Every team, just in case I played a... I didn't want to go into a game and have a generic rink or not have a logo. So I, I did everybody, just in case. And that was a little overkill. But it, it, even when I play on the console, you know, NHL 18, NHL 19, when I played on you know, the PlayStation, when I played those games, you can customize. You can create a team and customize that. And no joke, I would spend all day, three, four, five hours, just creating my three uniforms, the home away and alternate, and putting a logo on it. And that, that you were limited to logos, but you weren't limited to colors or, or you know. Right. So, and but they had all kinds of patterns. They had you know different shirt looks the different shirts you know the old you know anaheim ducks look they had the new stuff they had you know stuff with yokes stuff with no yokes stripes no stripes you know you could make it as as jazzed up as you want and then the same with the pants and the socks and then even the goalie equipment too you could you know get down to you know each finger pretty much you could change the color of a glove if you wanted to there was one game and i'm trying to think of what it was i don't think i finished it because it was a little too complex that you could control the design on the red line. Yeah, that was uh, NHL. Well, the, on NHL eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, I, maybe, maybe I, maybe I don't have twenty, but eight, eighteen and nineteen. And and you could go. You could cuss, You could change the color of the goalposts. Okay, so really? I had a team. I did the old Oakland Seals, and so I put like a kind of a green Seals look. And then you could control the uh, the dasher. So I made that yellow. You control when they score a goal. It had smoke coming out of the, the scoreboard if you wanted to. It had spotlights. It had different flashing things. And uh, you can – even the stadium, you control the color of the stadium, the colors of the seats. I mean, it, it was – no joke. It was hours and hours sitting there customizing this team with the jerseys and the rink, and you, they had different songs you could play if they scored or if they won the game. And I don't even think I played more than a couple of games, but just the customizing that was so fun. And then just playing a few minutes in the rink that you created with the team you created, with the jerseys you created, was really, really fun. It really was. So yeah. I, I go crazy sometimes, especially with the hockey with that stuff there, but uh, it, it's it's window dressing. It's it's really what it is. It, it is. It doesn't again, affect the game, but it, it makes it so much fun to see stuff you've created. It's all about immersion and what will go, keep you going back to play that game. And and one of the things too, you know, when when I see you do a stream or you know or Al or, or somebody else in the community, and they they're playing, like I say, mostly action PC, and you see, wow, where did you get that field? That field is awesome. It's the old, you know, San Diego field or it's the old, you know, Oakland Raider field or something like that. It's like, man, that's a that's a cool field for that game that you're playing. You really feel like you're back in 62 or 72 right. when you're watching this game here because of the field rather than using either A, a generic field that came with it or B, a modern field. 
or, or modern rink, you know what I mean? So when, or even basketball, you know. Uh, yeah, one of those sites you talk about, I think it's the Sports Replays there, they had a whole bunch of basketball courts for the Action PC, and it was fun because some of them, you know, like the old L.A. Forum, they had the L.A. Forum from, you know, what, 74 to 84, and then, you know, right. 85 to 89. So anytime they changed it, someone mocked it up for you. So depending on what year you were playing, uh, there's, you know. There's uh, Kapernsky. It's the one that did all the courts for Action PC and started doing that when the only option for basketball courts and Action PC were half courts. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they went to the full court. But uh, I, li- I like the old hockey rinks because they have the old nets and the old style. Uh, they don't have the trapezoid. But, so, but you mm-hmm. know, they have all the new stuff, and people put the ads on the ice, and they, they make it look really nice. I actually created some of my own rinks like we talked about I, when I played the Summit Series. Okay, I have, uh, you know, the the 72 Summit Series, which I still haven't finished. I've only played three games, I think. But I, I have the Team Canada rink, and then I created a Russian rink. And I created it very, very – it's not exact, but – what I did because it was 72 inside the, it was just like the bare lines, but in the circle on each side of the face off circle, kind of facing the goalie, if you will, I put the CCCP right in each side facing the goalie. So the camera, if you're sitting in the center ice, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going uh, vertically. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you follow, and then I put the hammer and sickle just inside each blue line diagonal across from each other. Because it was Russia in 72. And that's all I did for that rink. And it looked fantastic because it was so basic. And it's you could picture them doing that back then. You know, just oh, sure. something very basic, not all crazy, you know. Um, and that was not the actual rink. But that's what I created for the Russian home rink. And um, I shared that with a few people. and, and uh, but, but that was fun, just kind of creating that and trying to get that old school feel. And and again, it's all about trying to create the immersion and illusion in your head so you actually go out and play these games. And, and I think it does because when you sit and you see that, and it's second nature now because I do it every time I play. I don't really play a generic field ever anymore, if I can help it, if, you know. And so I can't imagine, like, not having that because that just – it 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 sucks you right into the game when you see the logos and and the fields and the courts and the you know the ice or whatever, it it really does you know in uh, Strat PC hockey uh, I figured out how to do that too. It's a little less with them, but you can drop in the logos and uh, mm-hmm. there was a whole bunch of rinks that people have created. Uh, you know, even the old school ones. And it just puts a couple of logos on. I think there's a center ice logo and then a team logo in front of each net so you could see who's yes. playing. And and that actually works. I would like to see them revamp that a little bit, make the rink a little bit bigger and things like that. But I mean that that works for them. At least you have something on there. And and I I do like that too. So um I, I enjoy seeing the logos. I've always been a logo guy. I actually one of my first jobs when I was younger, you know, twenty ish, uh, I worked at a company that would actually get the logos in. And we would make the printing plates for the hockey sticks and the bats, like the souvenirs. Oh, okay. So a lot of times before logos were even released to the public, we got them in-house. And uh, ever since then, I've was i just been a big logo guy because I remember yeah, seeing that. Uh, well, if, well, if it was, what, 91, 92, like the, I was at the Anaheim Ducks and the Ottawa Senators were coming in. Anytime a, che- a team changed their logo, we were one of the first people to see it because we were making the plates so they could start printing out the uh, the souvenirs. Yeah, the Bruins changed their logo at some point along that. I think when they moved from the old garden to the new one, right? Yeah, yep, they uh they did the a subtle one, but it's very different. very subtle, yeah. But there's a few there's a few teams that that were changing up and we would get the thing in and do it and between the you know you know what I'm talking about the little wooden baseball pens. Oh yeah, absolutely. And a little oh, wooden it's... hockey sticks with a pen on the end. So, yeah. so that that's what I was uh, that's what we would do and uh you know, I, I don't know if we ever had to fill anything out or if it was just one of these things that like, look, do not share this or we'll never work with you again, you know. So we never did. But it was still neat seeing this thing come in. It's like, holy cow, this is this is the what the logo's gonna look like. That's kinda neat, you know. So we were always one of the first people to see the logos uh before it was released to the public so they could print out the souvenirs. So that was always kind of fun. One year, I think it was after um the last Montana Super Bowl, the 49ers were going to change their logo and they had released the new helmet and it was 49ers and some sort of a god awful 80s thing. And the backlash was so bad, they didn't. 
really? they canceled. Yeah. They went back to, I think that eventually they changed the, uh, the size of the font of the S and F on the side of the helmet, but yeah, it was up, up here in new England. I remember, uh, you know, back, oh, it's gotta be eighties, seventies, eighties. They would, uh, they would have these two, two trucks that would drive out on the field. And one of them would have the, the Mr. Pat logo, which is the logo they used. And they would have another logo on a different truck just to get fan reaction. And, and no matter what logo they, they prayed it out, it got booed. It just the, the fans like boo. They wanted to stay with the Mr. Pat, and then they finally switched over to the uh, the Flying Elvis. They call it, yeah. Now. And they didn't give the fans a, a choice on that. But several times they 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 floated some ideas. I never saw any of them, but I did hear that they said, "Hey, they prayed out the new logo to see what the fans thought," and the fans booed, so they they're not going to use it. But a couple times they tried that. I I miss Pat Patriot. Yeah, I wish they would bring that back. I, I did the, the, my one time going to Gillette Stadium for a game. They they had those uniforms on. Oh, nice! Yep, and that's the game that they destroyed the Tennessee Titans, who were wearing the Oilers uniforms. And that's also the game that was in October that got snow and it was thirty degrees, and everybody left at halftime because we were soaked and freezing. So my I didn't even I didn't get to enjoy the game because I spent the the whole time in the bathroom trying to warm up because that was the only heat in the place. It just it was a freak storm come in, 4 o'clock game. It snowed and then rained and then froze. And I remember that game. I yeah, watched That's the one time I – it's the one game I went to, and uh, I was – we. I got home and watched the rest of the game on the TV because I was like, you know something? I, I got to go. I'm soaked. I'm freezing. I don't want to get sick. That was one of those things like, oh, yeah, football. Oh, wait, the weather's crappy. Ooh. It was time. unbelievable. And it was the game that Brady and Moss were, on, were just – going nuts out there and I couldn't enjoy it and I didn't feel bad because when we left we were in a, a massive flow of people that were leaving at halftime because the game was over at halftime people were just cold and miserable they're out of gloves I went to buy gloves they're out of gloves they're out of hats <laughs> just like okay time to go we're soaked I think 55 21 strikes out in my head it was yeah, it was a monster game. Yeah, it was it was a monster game. But anyway, um, yeah. So it's it's so uh, every time I I play the page, I always put the the Pat logo on for the Pats when I play. Even some of the modern stuff, I'll put that on there just because that, that's my favorite logo. So if I go to jazz up a game, I, I tend to use uh, some of my favorite logos, even if it's not accurate, even if it's not exact to the times. But I, it's what is what makes it work for you. Yeah. So when I like when I was printing out uh. Well, not printing up, but I, when I was um, cutting out some of the the strat hockey stuff and strat baseball stuff, I was putting them in the uh, the number six envelopes, like you know, like Dave showed how to do in his videos. Mm -hmm. Okay, not me, Dave, the other Dave, and uh, and so I would print out labels. I got the Avery labels, and this is part of other jazzing it up too. I got the Avery, yeah, la yeah the Avery absolutely. labels, and uh, you download the template from you know Avery dot com. And it just goes right in the word, and you drop the logos in, and um, you can print out printed color logos on the stickers, and you just stick them on the, the manila envelopes, and now I know what teams are what. So instead of just writing it in hand, I have nice color logos on all my envelopes, and sometimes I that's, would – That's a common yeah. jazzing up. Yeah, and, and sometimes I would, uh, you know, I would use a logo that wasn't – to that year i tried to get as close as i could so if it was a a 79 team i tried to get the 79 logo but sometimes i was like i couldn't find a good one i didn't like it so it's you know some, i'm going to use the 74 logo and i don't care because it's me i don't care you know right. like california seals they change their logo 37 times so i don't even know if i'm right so i just use one seals logo on all of them and that's that what you don't <laughs> have Gilles Maloche on speed dial to ask yeah i know right uh, what was this north stars oh, okay so uh, yeah, so I still do that too. I like to print out in color on my envelopes and do that and um, the whole bit. So uh, and, I mean, it's just endless things you can do with the hobby. And so I forgot who specifically asked us to talk about it, but it was a very good topic to talk about. So uh, once again, sportsreplays.net. Uh, if you take a look, if you Google or Bing, depending on what search engine of choice you use, uh, you can also do one for the Action PC community and find out what they have. Yeah, there's a there. lot of people that have done a lot of the legwork. And what's yeah. good, too, is sometimes you can find a generic uh, blank, either rink or field or court or, field or whatever. And if if you get any skills at all, I, I just have a basic photo program. And I, I just what I do is I drop a logo on it, and I fade the logo by 60%. And it looks like it's right on the field or, or on the ice, and it doesn't get in the way, and it looks pretty natural. So it's real easy to do 
to do that with a blank field. So there's really no no magic to it. It's just, you know, dropping logos in and just fading them out and making them look kind of good. But So if there's something you want to customize, you can do that. But a lot of the legwork is done out there already for you. And, and there's been some beautiful, beautiful. There are some very stuff. creative people in the community for sure. And it, it's amazing. It's like, wow, this is pretty amazing. And especially some of the old end zones. I don't know how they do that, but they, they did a good job with it. And, uh, you know, make it, you know, if you want the old Patriots logo from the seventies from uh, Foxborough stadium, it's there. You know, you want the old lions from the Pontiac silver dome. It's there. And it's, it's, that's, that makes it fun because it does bring you back. So we'd like to know from you guys, you know, what do you guys do to jazz up your game? Do you, uh, do you print out your envelopes in color? I mean, do you touch the cards or do you cut the team cards? I mean, when you print, do you add things to it when you print, uh, you know, or if you're on the PC games, what do you do with your PC games? How, how do you guys jazz up your games and do you, and how often do you do it? Is it a regular thing? For you to jazz up your game, or is it uh, a special thing? Maybe if you want to uh, stream a game or show off a game to somebody, or is this something you do all the time, or do you never do it? Do you just say, look, I just want to play the game as it is. I'm a purist, and this is how they sent me the game, and now I'm going to play it. And uh, there's no wrong answers here, no, as absolutely. usual. But we'd like to know what you guys do to jazz up your game, as we talked a little bit about what we do with Oz. And Ron's put out, like I said, many videos uh, helping people out uh, set up, the, especially the action PC games, if you want to drop in. The baseball one was a little more difficult because you had to really adjust a lot of the, the a foul. Ballpark. If you got you, because of the video chalkboard and every baseball field is different. So there's no two stadiums that are exactly the same. So you have to tell the program, but you can click and drag where the walls are, where the outfielders should be set, where the infielders are, when the runners should be. It's not that difficult once you do it. But it can look kind of daunting, and um, well, compared to the the hockey and the football and the basketball, we you just drop that's much the, more complex you, than the other. Two. Yeah, you just drop in the the pre made fields into a folder, and then you go to that team and just select from the field, and then you're done. You know, because they're all different. Yeah, baseball is very different. Yeah, and I tried to do that one time too. I I brought it in and I was watching a video and I was moving the foul poles and I screwed it all up. I was like, oh man, I think I went back and fixed it, but I was like. Oh, man, this is a lot of work for one baseball stadium. It really the is. The last few versions, they have actually will give – they'll take a look at the picture that you're trying to doll up and give you a general approximation of where they think it should be. And so it used to be you had to drag everything like a counter in a war game, like you'd punch it out. Hmm. And now there's only a handful of – you know, it's not exact by any stretch of the imagination. And the games that come with – the parks that come with the game – are already done for you. But um, but if you want, let's say, you're playing the St. Louis Cardinals from the 80s, they didn't play on grass. They played on turf. And so the, the grass field is not not correct. But, but yeah, I mean, so it depends on what you want to do to create an illusion that you're back in that yeah. particular era and doing it. And, again, it, it's up to you because, you know, there's times when I don't do much jazzing up and there's times that I go absolutely nuts jazzing up. And I guess it depends what you want to do and what, what what makes you happy. Really, what makes you happy? Absolutely. So so how do people get a hold of us? Yeah, so our website is digital to dice dot com digital to dice dot com that brings you right to our speaker page speaker speak over than R, and that's where you can find all of our episodes we're up to 26 episodes right now if you can believe it uh you can also find us on facebook facebook.com uh slash groups slash digital to dice that's we've got a pretty good and growing facebook community there we talk about games all the time people post the results from the game it's a good time we talk about the show there as well and lastly we do have a uh, text line if you'd like to send us a text or even a voicemail we may or may not play on the show 978-751-DICE 978-751-3423 so let's hit the outro music and wrap up episode 26 absolutely Yeah, bringing in some metal church here as we finish out again episode 26 thanks everybody for joining us ron did you get your ramstein tickets no did oh you? yeah yeah me and the wife are going to see ramstein when they come and, and, and which doggy's gonna have to 
donate some blood to pay for that. <laughs> they were expensive, but we haven't seen. <laughs> they haven't been around here in eight years, and I'm kind of thinking this is going to be the last time I get to see them. So uh, eight, eight years is a long time to go in between shows, and I can't imagine that they'd be back again. And at that point there, I'd be uh, in my 60s if they came back in eight years. So <laughs> I don't know if I'd be hanging with that crowd so anymore. So you buy your hearing aids, and then you go get your concert tickets. Yeah, yeah but but if you like fire, there's nothing like a Ramstein show. There's more fire at a Ramstein show than there is at Burning Man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so anyway, uh, people, thank you for doing it again. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.